Now, to the most of us, this is the topmost variant of the new Maruti Suzuki Brezza. While to the sum of us, this is the answer to the age-old question whether Maruti Suzuki can actually deliver all the features, a sturdy build quality, and a good performance engine at a relatively lesser price than its competitors. In order to understand whether the answer is a yes or a no, please stay back till the end of the video to know as to what extent can Maruti Suzuki play the game of scales of economy or volume. Or have they finally realized that it's more important to build a better product than just always successfully win in a price war? Now, hello and welcome back to Throttle Up. Today, we are going to review the 2022 Maruti Suzuki Brezza ZXI Plus variant, which is essentially the topmost variant in its lineup. Now, before I go ahead with the review of the newly launched Brezza, I have to thank the wonderful managers and a very courteous staff. At Tri-City Autos, Maruti Suzuki Arena, situated on Patiala Zirapur Highway, for providing me the cars so that I can review them. If you want to check out any of the Maruti Suzuki cars, I would definitely recommend you to this showroom because the staff is very courteous. They would guide you through all the information and the offers which are available. And the cars are in impeccable condition. So do visit their showroom if you are interested in any of the Maruti cars. I have included their website and their contact details and even the location in the description in the video itself. Now coming back, the Brezza is available in 4 variants, namely LXI, VXI, ZXI and ZXI Plus. The ZXI Plus gets only one engine option which is the mild hybrid 1.5 litre petrol but is available in both manual and automatic transmission. Now let's head to the engine bay, opening the bonnet of the car. The first thing that I notice is the bonnet is actually very heavy to my pleasant surprise. It is definitely heavier than the previous Brezza. Now this 1.5 litre petrol produces a maximum power of 103 PS and a maximum torque of 137 Nm, which is okay for an average consumer but a little less power for an enthusiast. The bonnet comes with proper insulation as to prevent cabin noise and it's heavy so I don't expect a lot of cabin noise inside the cabin so that's really a nice thing. Now onto the front profile of the Brezza. Now it is very boxy, it has a lot of straight lines unlike the previous Brezza which had a roundish nature of sorts. It gets chrome on the front itself with a gunmetal greyish grille which is running from the headlamp to headlamp. Now this is the grey grille I was talking about. It's of adequate size, not too big, not too small. It gets these chrome brackets with a boxy plastic design inside as well. There's not much ventilation on the top of that grille but the air dam has a lot of ventilation. The bottom is finished in a silver skid plate which is plastic, it's not metal and black bumper treatment for the overall bumper. It is a good looking front profile. Now for the headlamps you get a twin projector setup which is LED and LED DRLs which are running like this. I also like how the headlamp is wrapped around that grill so as to give it a more coherent look to the overall front profile. This is how it looks when it's lit up. It gets all white treatment which I really like. This new headlamp setup is more futuristic and way better than what we had in the previous generation. These DRLs and these two projectors make it look really nice. You get also a white Redmail LED fog lamp in this setup as well. That is the turn indicator which is again finished in LED so it's a proper out and out LED setup for the entire headlamp and the fog lamp. Now the fog lamp is finished in black plastic. There is no chrome insert anywhere on the front profile. I would have liked they had given more chrome on the fog lamp at least. Now I like the overall look of the Brezza from the front. It has a lot of straight lines and it's way more sharper than it was before because the previous one had a very roundish appeal to the overall profile and even the headlamps were rounder but this is a lot straight as compared to the previous one. This is how the Brezza looks from the side. The length of this car is 3995mm whereas the wheelbase is 2500mm so not a lot of change when it comes to the overall dimensions of the new Brezza. The wheelbase and the length pretty much remains the same. Now the ZXI Plus also get an option for the dual tone so this is finished in black and red. You can also however opt for a single color as well. This is finished in black gloss with a blind spot camera as well on both the sides. The turn indicators however are halogen. This is the grab handle which comes with the request sensor. Although the request sensor pretty much remains the same, the quality of it at least. Now this is a sloping roof line with functional roof rails and a black shark fin antenna. I like the dual tone aspect, it's glossy, it looks really nice on this red shade of the new Brezza. I like the overall appeal, I think because that's primarily because of the dual tone. It gets proper black plastic cladding at the bottom. Dual tone diamond cut alloy wheels for the ZXI Plus variant. 
which are 215, 60 R16. So that's a really nice tire profile for a car of this segment. These alloy designs are exclusive to the ZXI Plus variants because the ZXI gets a black alloy wheel. So they are not in dual tone. Only this variant gets a dual tone alloy wheel. Now this is what gets my heart racing. Honestly, this is one of the best looking rear profiles that we have had from Amarati in a long, long time. Looking at this rear, I'm certain that a Breza should have always looked like this. All the previous designs were nothing as compared to this one. So I really, really like the rear profile of the new Breza. It's fresh, it's neat and that tail lamp design is what I expect from a compact SUV. As for the individual elements, a Suzuki badging right there with Breza written just down below that. It also gets a rear wiper and washer, rear defogger and the stop lamp which is housed inside this integrated spoiler. So I really like that. It gets the rear parking camera along with rear parking sensors as well finished in that black bumper. I would have liked if the reflectors were on the edges of that bumper but they are sort of in the center and they get this straight line design between those reflectors in the gap itself. Although the diffuser kind of skid plate is finished in silver plastic. Now as for the tail lamp, it gets the LED tail lamp for the main light but it gets halogen bulbs for turn indicators and reverse light so that's the indicator and that's the reverse lamp. The main red part is the LED tail lamp. Now this is how it looks like when it's lit up, that's the halogen turn indicator and this is the LED lamp. I really like that, it's picked up, it seems to be picked up from a relatively more expensive car. The bulbs are however not a nice touch, they could have given that a LED as well because the front is all LED, I would have loved if even the rear was completely LED, however that's not the case. The rear exhaust is down below on the right, just a single exhaust with no chrome or anything like that. There is no fake exhaust treatment going on now. Let's open the boot of the car. The boot space is 328 liters, which is not class leading as such, but it's still properly shaped and has a lower loading lip. It gets a 60-40 split halogen lamp and a hook on the right with pockets on both the sides to keep your small stuff as well. I like how the loading lip is very low so you can keep your stuff very conveniently. It also obviously gets a parcel tray as well. Now for the fifth wheel, it's not an alloy but it's a full size 16 inch wheel so that's really appreciable. It would have been a good touch if they had given an alloy but that's very rare so no complaints whatsoever. Having a lower loading lip also adds to the convenience but it does compromise the depth of that boot space. So they could have given more depth and a little more boot space even though it meant a relatively higher loading lip. But that's obviously not the case. Coming to the back seat of the car, opening the door. The doors are a bit on the lighter side and as you can see there are a lot of hard plastics on that door pad. However, there's a use of fabric as well uh, near the grab handle but the top of it is obviously hard plastic. This is hard plastic. There's a silver garnish which I really like. Now this fabric is maroonish of sorts. This grab handle is something that I really don't like. Hard plastic at the bottom as well. Bottle space is enough to keep a 1 litre bottle but nothing more than that. This grab handle is not of a very premium quality. I don't like the plastic at all. Now for the seats, it is a black fabric upholstery, you don't get any leather even though this is the topmost variant. So that's kind of a disappointment. The recline angle is also not too reclined but also not upright as well. But we'll come to that in just a second. Now let's get into the back seat of the car. Now while closing the door, I realized that the doors are not very heavy. So they are very Maruti-ish in that regard. Now this is how the dashboard looks like, very new elements, a completely different touchscreen as to what we have been seeing in the previous generations of the Breza. So I really like that but we'll obviously come to that in just a few minutes. Now the legroom is nice, it's not too bad for a compact SUV and a sub 4 meter car. The thigh support however is less, so they could have increased the thigh support. Now it does get magazine holders on both the sides at the back of the front two seats. It also gets the center armrest with two headrests which are adjustable. There is no headrest for the middle passenger. I don't know why do they do that. But for the center armrest, it's broad, it's long. It also gets the two cup holders but it's still finished in fabric just like the other parts of the seat because the entire upholstery is fabric. I really don't get that. The grab handles get a coat hanger and go softly so that's nice. The cabin lamp is at the very back so you have to stretch out your hand at the very weird angle so as to turn on or turn off the lamp which to me personally seems a lot of unnecessary effort. Now it gets the rear AC vents which are very ordinary in their looks. Also one type C and a normal USB socket. I do not like the lids because they keep falling on that socket so that's weird. 
now it gets a slider and the very basic plastic so it does not feel premium at all they could have used better plastics and at least a better look for those AZ vents maybe a chrome garnish around that or all of that there is a hook provided as well at the back of the driver's seat so you can secure a carry bag or something like that now overall the back seat of the Brezza is a decent space to be in nothing too extraordinary and nothing to complain about also the thigh support and the recline angle could have been a bit better but nothing that you will feel uncomfortable about now as for the door pads you get tweeters on the a pillar as you can see right there the door handles are finished in chrome other than that very similar maroon brown fabric and a lot of hard plastics on offer the plastic quality could have definitely been better because that's not at all premium now the chrome handles are still plastic that silver garnish is still plastic it gets a reticle adjustment for the ORVMs and auto foldability as well window lock button lock unlock button for the doors auto up down only for the driver side but all the four windows are power obviously now you do get manual adjustability so there's no electrical adjustment offer but you can adjust it for height and the backrest is obviously adjustable three pedals since this is a manual and there's a proper dead pedal as you can see right there these are the levers for fuel lid and bonnet opener now these are many buttons on this side of the steering wheel it gets the engine start stop button the auto start stop enabler headlight leveler 360 degree view parking camera button and this is to toggle the traction control on or off now the top buttons are for heads up display this is to adjust the brightness and these are to basically toggle through the different displays within the hud itself now let's head into the cabin but before heading to that this is the key fob that you get it gets blue finish for the suzuki logo and a lock on unlock button for the door lock it's a very compact looking key fob so that's nice but i love the blue finish which they have done on the key fob itself now this is the steering wheel and the instrument cluster which greets you the first thing you notice is that it gets an analog display which is really nice with a tft mid in between now this is the unit that you are familiar with since you get a very similar looking instrument cluster in the grand vitara and the Bolino as well now Maruti Suzuki just can't do away with these two sticks which they give to toggle between the MID and the odometer. I definitely don't like using these. Why not just give buttons on the right side of the steering wheel just like every other manufacturer does. Anyways coming back the tachometer is on the left with the temperature gauged house inside that tachometer. The speedometer is on the right with the smart hybrid badging as well. The fuel gauge is inside that as well. Now the right stick is to control or toggle through the screens between the MID which is a colored unit. It has a lot of information to display, one of it being the amount of battery which is remaining and what exactly at a particular point of time is powering the motor of that car. The other information you can see is the average fuel economy, the obviously the average driving information like the time, the power and the torque output and all of that. So a good looking information display but nothing extraordinary or new because we have seen this on the other cars as well of Maruti. Now for the steering wheel you get the tilt and telescopic function both. You can adjust the lever right there and it's adjustable for reach as well as rake. The steering wheel is finished in leather which is actually exclusive to the ZXI Plus variant because you do not get leather finish in other variants. The buttons on the left are for infotainment, these are for your call and the right ones are for the cruise control. Conventional stocks to control your wipers and your headlamps. So head wipers are on the left and headlamp stocks on the right. You also get auto headlamps in this variant of the Brezza. It also gets this decut treatment and is finished in silverish garnish so i like that now coming to a very exclusive feature which maruti has recently introduced in grand vitara balino and even the brezza it only gets this in the zxi plus variant yes that's the heads up display now in order to bring this up you have to start the engine of the car it says starting right there i know it's blurred but i'll tell you what's going on it says hello and now it says low fuel it's obviously projecting this on this glass and it's a cool display it does not add value as much but it's still cool to have but you don't need it particularly it shows the tachometer the speedometer in a digital format i like the digital tachometer that they have done it also shows the fuel gauge you can adjust the brightness of it it has 1 to 10 settings for the brightness i personally don't see much value in the heads up display for any car for that matter i rather would have appreciated a bigger mid in the instrument cluster itself I maybe a bigger screen occupying the, all the space between those two dials so that would have been nice but nonetheless you can adjust the brightness of this head, heads up display and show this off to your friends and family because this car gets the heads up display now this is how the dashboard looks like very similar to that of the new Baleno 
but i am not complaining because it looks good it has a lot of hard plastics involved actually it's all hard plastics no fabric or leather on that dashboard now when you start the ignition it shows the suzuki logo by starting up and does a full 360 view of the car because it gets the 360 camera you cannot disable you can disable it but if the setting is on it will do that now i like the interface for this smart play pro plus and this piano black finishing with this chrome base for that infotainment you get the touch buttons to control the power go to the home media settings and control the volume also it gets the energy flow function to display the smart hybrid and whether it's functioning or not you get the vehicle controls to set the ambient lighting the speed limit alert at what speed should the door lock or unlock the vehicle alerts you can also have on the infotainment itself you can see on the top right there are few warning lights on display itself now it's easy to navigate and the touch is very responsive it's way better than what we had in the previous generation of all the maruti cars so i really like that it gets a while to get used to it because sometimes you get you will scroll and there's no information on display because the system is such that you would see that everything is seems to be scrollable but it's not so it would take two or three times of usage to actually get familiar with the interface but still very good looking very nice to use and i like this infotainment now even if you turn off the power of that infotainment it shows a clock which is very nice to look at so I'm overall very impressed with this floating infotainment. It also gets this piano black finish, unlike the VXI variant, which gets a matte black. So it does not look really great. Now as for the 360 camera, you can obviously switch it on through the button on the right of that steering wheel, as I already showed. You can toggle through the displays and the views. So one gets the full body and the previous one, which you were actually seeing, does not get the chassis of that car. Actually, just the chassis and not the body of the car. Now the 360 view camera has a lot of settings you can adjust for the adaptive guidelines now if you put it in the reverse gear this is what you see it does get the adaptive guidelines and the reverse point camera on the right and the 360 view on the left the reverse point camera also gets three different angles to view the rear of the car now that's the wide angle and that is to look at dead bottom of what is what lays below your car so all in all a very well thought out 360 camera and a reverse parking camera now the center AC vents are placed below the infotainment with the hazard lamp button on the center and a decent plastic usage on the AC vents. It also gets a hard plastic matte finish in this brown color for the entire dashboard. It obviously gets the climate control with very nice to use toggle buttons for your regulator and your fan. And it's it lights up in orange when you turn on the headlamps. So it looks really good. Now you get 12 volt socket on the left which also has a lid and a USB socket on the right. This variant also gets a wireless electric charger as you can see talking about other ergonomic spaces you get some space to keep your key and two cup holders one of them is bigger one of them is smaller so I don't know what's that about but still good enough space to keep your stuff. The center console armrest is finished in plastic why why not give fabric or some leather to give it a more premium appeal but you don't get any of that. It has a decent space not very deep as such, and it's also narrow so two people can't keep their hands on that armrest although it does get the sliding function now this is the manual variant so you get a manual gear knob which is finished in plastic and leather both it gets the manual handbrake which is finished in out and out plastic now obviously as i mentioned hard plastics all around hard plastic this chrome line this is hard plastic finished in matte finish and a brown shade now the silver line runs across the dashboard to provide the base for the infotainment comes at the bottom goes to the center console and ends here why why not complete the circle why not give it on both the sides of the console to make it look better it just feels incomplete now as for this coffee brown shade which they have done it's matte plastic just imagine if this would have been brown leather it would have elevated this dashboard so much more it would have felt very nice but still what can you do now for the glove box you get a lamp right there and the cool function also as you can see at the back of that dashboard it's adequately shaped and sized, so you can keep your basic documents and some cables or random stuff. Now for the sun visor, you get a vanity mirror with a halogen lamp for the co-driver's sun visor. The lamp is very basic, it is very rough to use, very ordinary, sadly marathi like plastic, but you do not get any vanity mirror on the driver's side and obviously no lamp as well. It gets the auto dimming function for the inside rear view mirror and you also get a sunglass holder to keep your sunglasses obviously it gets the sunroof and halogen cabin lights uh, this is for you to adjust the halogen cabin lights and that is for the sunroof now this is a single pane sunroof and not a panoramic one it also has the manual blinds so no automatic blinds on offer 
and this is how the sunroof can be opened very conventional controls nothing that you would have difficulty to understand and it's a decent sized sunroof not too small but not too big either it also gets a tilt function and it's simple to use it took me a second to figure out the one touch functionality of it but it is there so i was worried for a second whether it does not get that one touch operation and you would have to keep that button pressed in order to open or close it but that's not the case i was just it took me a second to figure that out now for the seats you get the seatbelt adjuster in this variant and the seats get a fabric treatment i am not liking this should have been leather it gets this orange stripe the cushioning is nice the bolstering is rather flimsy it is broad but it's still flimsy seatbelt adjuster just like i mentioned and adjustable headrests as well now since this is the topmost variant you get side and curtain airbags as well with the two front airbags obviously so all in all six total airbags which are on offer for the ZXI plus variant of the Brezza this also gets the connected CarTech features to integrate it with your phone and then maybe start the AC or the ignition of it. I personally am not a very big fan of the connected CarTech features because it seems gimmicky to me but then again to each their own and some people might find it very useful. I find that the integration on the cars which are much expensive much better and in this price segment at least it's just a feature that everyone's just giving for the sake of it and not much use comes out of it. But overall, if I had to use one adjective for the ZXI Plus variant of the Brezza, it has to be feature loaded. It is filled to the brim with features and there's so much more, even much more than what you would expect from a car of this segment. But all of it comes at a price. Now the topmost variant of the Brezza for the manual variant costs around 12.3 lakhs X showroom. And for the automatic one, it's a whopping 13.8 lakhs X showroom, which would practically cost you around 15 lakhs or even more than that on road. So it is by no means a cheaper price car. It is expensive and it is way more than what you would actually expect from a Brezza. Not to mention that there are some variants of the Grand Vitara as well, which is actually a bigger car that you can also opt for a similar price range. And it also gets a strong hybrid version as well. This is only available in mild hybrid. But having said this, it does not mean that this car does not make for a very good proposition. It still is a good car because it will offer features which some other brands would offer for 20 lakhs plus. So that is something that you get in a price tag of around 14 lakhs on road for the manual variant at least. Now as for the comparison between the variants of the Brezza itself, the ZXI plus costs over 1.4 lakhs X showroom over the ZXI but it still gets you very useful features like 6 airbags, center armrest, leather up steering wheel, fog lamps, auto folding ORVMs, height adjustable seat belts and driver seat and even a 360 degree parking camera. So it gets you useful features. There are also some good feel good features as well which are added in this variant like the ambient lighting, a heads up display, better sound system, leather app steering wheel, connected car tech features and some other features because there is no shortage of features whatsoever. Now if you remember I asked a video at the very beginning of this video asking whether Maruti Suzuki can still play the price game by keeping their cars at a relatively lower price as compared to their competitors because they have already always been successful in playing that game. Now earlier there were always allegations that Marty compromises on the features, the build quality etc but now they have a very solid product, a long list of features, an efficient engine and a much better build quality than the previous generations of the Maruti is what makes it a very good product as compared to its competitors from the Hyundai, Kia, Tata, Honda, MG and the other brands as well. But then again the price is now at par with those brands as well because Maruti has finally seemed to take the note of the increasing consciousness and the awareness among the Indian consumers and the fact that their buying capacity has increased over the course of years. Now they want a product which is best and very comparable to its competitors while not just bothering about saving few bucks at the cost of build quality and the features. Also Maruti needs to understand and I think they have actually understood that their brand power is so much that even if they build a product which is at par with its competitors even at the same price people would still flock to the Maruti showrooms to buy a Brezza or any other car for that matter of the Maruti Suzuki brand because I repeat it is the freaking Maruti Suzuki that faith that trust is unbeatable and they could do anything but still be able to sell any of their products like hotcakes. So now that was my take on the ZXI Plus variant of the newly launched Maruti Suzuki Brezza. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below about the car and whether would you buy one if you had a budget of, of around 14 to 15 lakhs 
do drop your opinions in the comment section below as to what do you think about the question that i raised initially in the video and the answer that i gave in the end of the very video now don't forget to like this video because i'm assuming that you stay till the very end so you must have appreciated our content subscribe to our channel for more such detailed car reviews and walk arounds keep watching throttle up